With a show of hands, how many of you have a dog at home? Yes. I was, I was afraid of silence. <laughs> have you ever noticed they're awake before you? They're probably asleep well after you? And yet the first thing in the morning, when, you're, when you wake up, you're, they're excited to see you. They can go from a dead sleep to out the door, tripping you on their way in less than a minute. Or what about when you need to go to the bathroom? You just want a couple minutes to yourself. I'm a single mom, I hide in the bathroom. <laughs> My daughter comes barging in, Mommy, make Cinderella's shoe fit Barbie. Hannah, Cinderella's shoe only fits Cinderella. She storms out, and through the door left ajar, <laughs> these eyes and ears peer through. Good morning, Mom. You're getting kind of worried you've been gone for five seconds. <laughs> Are you almost done? I need you. Meet Malika. She's my German Shepherd. She's a rescue from a high-kill shelter in Georgia. And by high-kill shelter, I mean these stray dogs are picked up off the street. They're kept in a shelter for no more than five days until they're sentenced to euthanasia. And I'm glad she found her way to us. She's our new best friend. Her life goal is to please me. It's nobody's goal, it's her goal. And to eat anything and everything in sight. That's her life goal. When I come home from work, I throw my bags on the ground. Honey, I'm home. Babe? You know who comes running to the door? Not Hannah. Not my husband. My dog. Sheer excitement. Just imagine your partner greeted you at the door in the way that your dog does. <laughs> Runs to you, jumps, hugs, kisses from head to toe every day. One pat on her head, her tail is wagging. And I just leave my stress at the door. How can you not? Find me a human that loves like a dog does. I lost my last shepherd to lymphoma, and I'm sorry if I get emotional here. Bella was an amazing German shepherd. Give me a second. <laughs> this is how connected we are to our pets, right? She had a big bark and a very, very soft heart. She was my motivator. She came to me at a year of age, and in her eight years that she spent with me, she saw me through my first job. She celebrated my every success, and she listened to me sob over every mistake. And when my dad died, only three days after my daughter was born, Bella stepped into so many roles. Suddenly, she was my grief counselor, my emotional and therapeutic support, my deterrent from needing and feeding drugs and alcohol, Sorry, Mom. She filled that void, and she did so without judgment. She worked overnight shifts with me at the emergency clinic. We had to pay our bills. While working day shifts with me, building our clinic, all while being best friend to my daughter, she was our cheerleader. Bella left an imprint on all the lives of all the people who had the pleasure of meeting her. Clearly, pets bring an unquestionable and unstoppable appreciation, love, companionship, and loyalty to our lives. And did you know, about 10% of our vulnerably housed adults in Toronto own pets, some of which blatantly refuse housing because they rather stay on the streets with their animals. Have you ever walked past someone on a Toronto street corner? 
a dog leashed in one hand and a sign in the other, please help, I need food for my dog. And you cross the street to completely avoid them? That was me. I did it for years. And I'll tell you why. I felt threatened because I judged somebody. And also, as a veterinarian, all I could think of was, give me your dog. I'll give it to a shelter. It's probably harboring some parasites. It's intact, meaning it's not spayed or neutered. You're the reason our streets are overpopulated with stray animals. Surely, if you can't afford the vet, you don't deserve the pet. How can I need, now lead, how can I now lead charity initiatives for the homeless? Meet the man and his dog who transformed my way of being so judgmental to someone who now makes a difference in the lives of the vulnerably housed. With permission, of course, this is John and Minyaka. They live at a homeless shelter and they are able to stay together. Minyaka goes everywhere with John. Neither my dog, Malika, or Minyaka, John's dog, are lacking exercise. Neither of them are lacking food, maybe a different kind of food. But I quite literally sat on the shelter floor with John and Minyaka, and they were sharing chicken, fast food chicken, out of the box, the same box, on the floor of the shelter. I mean, I don't share my food. Does it look like I share my food? <laughs> and yet, when we go through the adoption process, we're asked our, our occupation, our salary, for a veterinary reference. We're asked for a fenced yard. Neither of these dogs have a fenced yard. And it really doesn't matter if I did have one. Minyak is far more exercised than my dog. And for what it's worth, I would give John an exemplary veterinary reference. <clears throat> when I lost my dog, Bella, waking up in the morning in a quiet home, it was painful. She was the reason I woke up on time. For John, Munyeka's companionship is the only reason he wakes up at all. So now, I lead charity initiatives Pause for cause to end global pet poverty. And in doing so, we're able to bring vitality back to the owners by means of managing their pet's care. Our pilot project was supported by many people. We had a lot of very empathetic veterinary staff. We had fellow veterinarians sharing their space with me. We had lab, drug, food, and representatives contributing behavioral specialists. And in one weekend, we saw 17 animals providing free vaccines, exams, blood work, biopsies, anything that was possible in the scope of a pop-up clinic. <clears throat> and this is where I met John and Minyaka. And I'll tell you Minyaka's story. She presented to me with eyes so loyal to and protective of John and John so emotionally bonded to his dog. On physical exam, I felt a mass on one of her breasts. We biopsied the mass and waited what seemed like forever, when you're waiting for results, for the expected diagnosis of breast cancer. When I told John, he was petrified because Minyeka potentially didn't have very long to live. <clears throat> While we were the bearer of bad news, our network of angels promised to bring it together. Munyeka needed to go to hospital, she needed to be admitted, she needed surgery to remove the mass, and she needed to be spayed. And John wouldn't let her go to the hospital without him. So now what? I have a sick dog and no consent. I convinced John that we would take Munyeka to the hospital and he would just come along. And that's what we did. And our drive into the hospital, John shared his story with me, and I'll share it with you. He shared the life he had, the family he had, 
his life experiences, and everything that he'd lost. He said to me, Munyeka is his responsibility. She gives him purpose and accountability. She is all that she, sorry, she is all that he has from his past. And then he said, Dr. Nadia, if Munyeka doesn't make it through this surgery, I have no reason to go back to the shelter. I have no reason to live. Great, no pressure. <laughs> Fortunately, everything went well. After, after surgery, we all went out for dinner, and I've never been thanked like I was thanked that day. And it's because I didn't just save Munyeka, our team came together and we saved John too. Shortly after, I found out that John and Munyeka were removed from the shelter. My heart was heavy. We didn't hear from them. They were nowhere to be found. And I just stayed in touch with the shelter in hopes that they would return. And finally, two months ago, I get a call from the shelter. John and Munyeka were found. They were living out of a forest in a tent, and John was jumped and stabbed, stabbed for his shoes at that, and his tent was set to flames. And he only wanted to return to the shelter if Dr. Nadia would look at Munyeka's paw. So back we go. We go back to the shelter and we look at Munyeka's paw. It's perfectly fine, guys. The paw was perfectly fine. And in true Munyeka style, she's rolling around for a belly rub. And as I rub up and down her belly, I feel five more tumors. I look up at John. No, Dr. Nadia, no. I will save my every nickel of panhandling if you save my dog. She's all that I have. Munyeka was no longer in remission. So now what? Back to the clinic. With John in tow, Munyeka in tow, and off we go. And this time, on our drive into the clinic, we shared some more stories. This story was about his recent attack. How Munyeka watched him get attacked until he yelled at her to get away and go hide, and he promised he would come find her. When John was left to die, blood dripping down his face, his teeth in the palm of his hand, his shoes torn off his feet, all he could do is stumble away and call for his dog. I can't even demonstrate the fear and the sadness in his voice when he shared how he called for his dog. And then he told me that Munyeka came running out of a bush and they reunited like they'd been apart for years. When he told me the story, all I could think of was, thank God she came back, because his reason for just being had completely disappeared in her absence. So on recovery, I ask myself, why don't the homeless deserve their pets? She is his purpose, reason, and responsibility. He's compassionate and loving, and they are inseparable companions. Let's not judge. We both make great pet keepers, and John probably better than I. To John and the world, my purpose in this world is to bring veterinarians together with love, to provide collaborative, judgment-free veterinary access to all the homeless pets and their people globally, bringing vitality back to these people and their pets like John and Munyeka. And my call to you 
is just look at what you do for a living. I'm using veterinary care and the homeless population as an example. What do you do for a living? And what do you do for fun? How can you give back? If you think, I don't have time to give back, consider all the time spent watching TV, social media, gaming on your phone, hiding in the bathroom from your daughter. All this time, when you look at your schedule authentically, schedule time to give forward, feed our community, feed the greater community or the world, with your expertise, whatever it may be. Thank you.